It's unfortunate how some things that used to be fun and magical could be ruined by one thing or another and become boring, embarrassing, or downright depressing. Like last Christmas, my entire extended family reunited at my parents' house for the holidays. Now, there's a certain age in between childhood and adulthood where stuff like Christmas rituals come off as more cringy than anything else. <sighs> and out of all the people there, my cousin and I seemed to be the only ones in that boat. So when the whole family, my parents, aunts, uncles, grandparents, and nephews, and everyone else started singing Christmas carols, my cousin and I traded a silent look from across the room, which screamed, let's get the heck out of here. Sure enough, we knew just where to go. The gigantic public ice skating rink in the center of the town's prided park. Around that time of year, it was always open late, and it was always packed. Say what you will about how ice skating looks. It's one of those things that's truly fun for all ages, especially if you like watching newbies repeatedly eat facefuls of ice. My cousin and I skated around for about an hour or so before we decided to take a break. The monumental Christmas tree which loomed over the rink had a number of benches around its base, so that's where we elected to rest our ankles. But we'd barely had the time to loosen our laces before we were approached by a man dressed up as a cracked out Grinch. Good evening, boys. Having a fantastic Christmas? Get any gifts? Uh, yeah. Only lame ones. Oh, that's just perfect. Santa Claus is just a big fraudulent butterball, isn't he? Well, I'm not. <laughs> Dude, I could tell you put that green on with Sharpie. Your hair's just right, though. Forget about that! When I say you'll get a present from me, you can bet your life on it. Oh, yeah? What'd you steal from Whoville this year, Mr. Grinch? <laughs> <laughs> That's when the Grinch put on the most wicked of smiles and revealed from a scrappy sack a brand new PlayStation, still in its box. My cousin and I both changed tunes the moment we saw that. You want this? Yeah, of course you do. But if you want it, you gotta do me a favor. A trade. You gotta climb to the very top of that big ugly tree and fetch me the crowning ornament. My cousin and I traded an uneasy look, then looked up to the top of the tree, searching. I don't see anything up there, man. I mean, there should be, but- Oh, it's there. Sure as a forgotten New Year's resolution. It's there. All right, man. I'll take you up on that. Make sure he doesn't leave, cuz. Before I could do anything to stop him, my cousin hopped the fence around the base of the tree and started his way up, climbing with a purpose. I kept one eye on him and the other eye on the Grinch to make sure he didn't run off. However, within a few seconds, I started to realize that he seemed more invested in my cousin's climb than either of us. His black, pearly eyes gleamed with anticipation and glory, fixated on my cousin as he inched closer and closer to the top. Soon enough, some of the other people around us took notice of the man climbing the tree, stopping to point, gawk, and take pictures. Finally, when my cousin made it to the top and still saw nothing, he shouted down to us, Where's the ornament? You are the ornament! <laughs> <laughs> the Grinch shoved the PlayStation into my arms and came within an inch of my face as he said, Merry Christmas, kid. Then, he ran towards the tree, hopped the fence and threw his scrappy sack onto the ground at the base, pulled a lighter out of his pocket, and set it on the sack. I don't know what was in the bag, but as soon as the little flame licked the fabric sack, it shot up into an intense tower of fire. The Grinch yelped and jumped back, fleeing from the scene and laughing with despicable glee as he ran. <laughs> Merry Christmas, you filthy animals! By the time I looked back to my cousin, the fire had already consumed the base of the Christmas tree and was climbing with ferocious speed. Everyone at the rink now took notice, shrieking and panicking as if their life was in danger. My cousin was way up there, frantically trying to climb back down to no avail. I could see the fear on his face and the terrible decision in his eyes as he looked down right at me. 
and that's when he jumped. He collided with the widening inferno wrapped around the tree before hitting the pavement, tumbling through the crackling flames before disappearing into the hellish orange smoke at the bottom. I rushed over, dropping the PlayStation on the ground and jumping the fence. The hot metal burned my hands, and the smoke <laughs> poured into my lungs, giving me scar tissue that I can still feel to this day. I fumbled around in the zero visibility haze until I found my cousin and pulled him free from the fire. Out in the open, I could see everything. How mangled and charred his body was. I thought he was dead. I just sat there in shock next to his motionless body until the ambulance came and took him away. I want to say that luckily he did survive. But if you've ever heard what recovering from full-body third-degree burns is like, you'll have no trouble believing me when I tell you that my cousin himself said he'd rather be dead than deal with the pain. He was in a coma for weeks, and when he woke up, he had no skin at all. He didn't leave the hospital until just recently, and I don't think he'll ever look or act the same way ever again. And as far as what we got out of this, when I took the PlayStation box home and opened it, there was no game console in it at all. Just a couple bricks and an oversized star ornament. And with it, a Christmas card scrawled with chicken scratch that read, Here's that ornament you were looking for. Merry Christmas. The day of Christmas was a day of sheer horror turned fairy tale in literally the span of a night. It's something that I'll never forget, but I feel like I'm internally at peace now. It all started when I was on my way to the mall to do some Christmas shopping with my family. Our household was a family of four which consisted of myself, my parents, and my older brother Jimmy. We had planned to buy some last minute gifts and snacks for our family road trip which was set to take place the following day. Visiting my relatives who lived on the other side of town became tradition during the holidays. As we pulled up onto the parking lot of the mall, my mom began to reverse her vehicle into an available parking spot, only to get rudely honked at by another car. I looked across my window and saw a man who was literally dressed as the Grinch, with a strange resemblance to Jim Carrey. I assumed he was dressed up for some cheap Christmas gig that the mall hired him for. My mom rolled down her window to give a piece of her mind till the Grinch said, Holy knockers, I mean, ho, 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 Merry Christmas and all that. Um, would you mind getting out of my parking spot? I was here first. Your parking spot? <laughs> you can kindly park somewhere else, bud. What? You heard the lady. Now park somewhere else before I park my fist in your face. <sighs> I bet your wife wants me to park this Big Mac truck in her little garage, ho! As the Grinch drove off in a rage, my family and I got out of the vehicle and began making our way towards the mall. I recall seeing hundreds of people scattered across multiple stores, frantically shopping as if there was some sort of sale going on. That's when I noticed from the corner of my eye that my parents were buying my brother a toy from a nearby Christmas shop. I politely asked if I could get the same toy but instead got the cold shoulder. They refused to buy me any gifts due to my lackluster grades and performance at school. When we got home, I remember making myself vocal that I opted to not participate in the family road trip. My dad and I butted heads for the next hour or so and finally came to the conclusion that I was going to stay home this Christmas. As my family was getting ready to depart the following day, I heard my mom and dad saying stuff like, Meg, he's not budging. The little shit is stubborn as hell. Mark, we can't just let him stay home alone. He has to come with us. We can't afford to spoil him anymore. The twerp keeps failing in every class. Just buy him a stupid toy so he can come with us. Don't worry. It's just one Christmas. Maybe the twerp will get his act together. Ugh, we're gonna go to hell for this. And there I was, home alone on Christmas Eve. I genuinely couldn't believe my parents had the balls to leave me at the house by myself, let alone on Christmas. Throughout the night, there wasn't much to do except snack on food while watching a few Christmas flicks. I wondered if I would receive any calls from my parents asking if I was okay, or a simple, Merry Christmas son, wish you were here with us, 
but unfortunately there was none of that. Just the normal exclusion I was used to as I sat there watching the television. As I began to wither away in my deep sleep, I woke up to my fire alarm going off. I could see my Christmas tree being burnt in a hazy flame as my dog was barking in the kitchen. What the hell is going on? Somebody help me! Mom! Dad! I darted past the living room and into the kitchen where the landline was, only to see the same Grinch my family encountered earlier. He was shoving my dog in a cooking pot as I shouted. What the hell are you doing? Leave my dog alone, you freak! You're awake now, Scallywag. Just in time for a triumphant Christmas dinner. Who are you? You still daydreaming, you lousy dingbat? I'm of course the Grinch. Why are you doing this? Maybe if your lousy mother would have relinquished the parking spot, we wouldn't be having such a dark Christmas. The Grinch then creeped past me and into the living room, where he then climbed up a rope in the fireplace. I crept in the fireplace following the Grinch and yelled, So is this what Christmas is all about? Burning alive, home alone? Home alone, you say? All I wanted was Christmas presents! Is that too much to ask for? My whole world completely changed when the Grinch said, you climbing up or what, kid? I couldn't tell whether the Grinch was playing possum or not, but ended up climbing the rope anyway. And from that point on, the rest is history. It's been a couple years since my disappearance. My parents currently don't know where I am, and I doubt they even care. As a matter of fact, the whole world doesn't know where I am. But rest assured, I finally found the happiness I've been searching for, and some of us never find. That's a good boy, Joey. Christmas will always be a marvelous time. Now you can get all the presents in the world. You know that I love you very much, right? Yes, Daddy. Sledding has always been one of my favorite wintertime activities. It can be dangerous, but it's totally worth it. There just isn't anything else in the world quite like it, for people on a budget at least. I always wanted to take a girl tobogganing too, so the first winter I had a girlfriend, I took her to the best place I knew of. It's got great hills for tobogganing, long and steep drops that take you to great speeds. It's such a popular place, in fact, that during the day it gets busy to the point of being hazardous. As in you're liable to run into somebody who isn't paying attention. That's why I convinced my girlfriend to go with me in the evening. It's not exactly the smartest decision in terms of temperature and general visibility, but it was her first time tobogganing, so I figured a novice like her should have the whole slope to herself. Especially since we couldn't go down together. I only had one toboggan the same one I've had since childhood, and it was far too small for both of us to fit on at once. Not exactly as romantic as I'd planned, but you work with what you've got. Tracy wanted to go first. I was a little worried since I didn't get a chance to show her how it's done, but she took my advice quite well. I gently pushed her down the slope and she rolled the whole way with speed and grace, except for the very end. She was near the bottom and slowing down, and right as I was about to cheer, she tumbled right off the toboggan and landed flat on her back. Tracy, you okay? She didn't respond. I couldn't tell if she was hurt or just stunned, but I started making my way down the hill as fast as I safely could anyway. As I was trotting through the snow, I saw a dark figure come out from the trees. He looked a bit like Santa, dragging a sled behind him. I was only halfway down when I heard Tracy scream. I picked up my pace and ran to her side, shouting, Hey, who the hell are you? I finally made it to Tracy, who clambered up to her feet and hid behind my shoulder. It was getting dark, barely any daylight left, and only the light of a crescent moon to work with. But as the man stepped closer, I was able to see enough. He was dressed as Santa Claus, but he was really the Grinch. And I mean it, his skin was puke green, his eyes piss yellow and bloodshot and his whole body cursed with unkempt green hair. You know who I am. Who are you, huh? A tourist? Or perhaps a burglar in the night? Have you been waiting for me to fall asleep so you can sneak into my cave and strangle me in my bed? Huh? 
Why should I trust you? You're not from around here. We're just tobogganing, dude. Like, what the hell is wrong with you? Oh, is that so? Well, I see two of you and only one teeny tiny little toboggan. So I ask of you, good sir, how am I, the Grinch, supposed to believe that flimsy alibi? Well, we're, um, uh, we're kind of broke. Ah, oh, what a tearjerker. Young broke love. Oh, well, I guess I have no choice but to be the better man here. Fine, I'll give you my toboggan, young man, for a price. Really? You'd do that? I thought you would, you know, steal ours. Nonsense, that was the old me. I'll give you my toboggan, little lady, if you do just one thing for me. Carve me the most spectacular snow angel you can, right here on this slope. My girlfriend flopped right down into the snow and started flapping her arms and legs, but... No, no, not there, you idiot! Get up! We're losing illumination out here. You gotta do it where it'll catch the moonlight. Follow me, come on! He led us a few steps up the slope to what must have been the exact spot at which Tracy had tumbled. He pointed to the hard-packed snow and snapped his finger. Do it here. Tracy shot me a concerned glance, which I understood. I mean, snow angels are a fresh powder kind of thing. You can't really make one in a spot like that where it's more ice than snow. But she must have really wanted that toboggan, because she got down on the ground and went for it anyway. For the first minute, nothing happened. She flapped around like a fish out of water. It wasn't until her body heat started to melt the ice that she was able to make any progress. Slowly but surely, she made the angel-shaped indentation in the hillside. <laughs> I heard the Grinch giggling to himself, like he was playing some kind of joke on us. But I had no earthly idea what it could be. Until... The snow Tracy was uncovering turned dark red. I couldn't believe it at first, but the splotch of crimson grew wider by the second. Tracy, get up! You're hurting yourself! I turned to give the Grinch a death stare, but only caught the last little glimpse of him as he ran off into the trees with wretched laughter, leaving the sled behind. As Tracy got up from the ground, she finally noticed the bloody angel but was miraculously unscathed. If it wasn't her blood, then whose was it? We got down on our knees and started digging through the snow with our hands. It was like digging through stone, but we had to see what was below. And sure enough, we did. With one last chunk of ice, I revealed the deathly face of a frozen little boy. We ran off, leaving both toboggans behind. Once in my car, we called the cops, who told us to wait so we could give our statements. Months later, the info went public. The boy had disappeared the night before we were there. He didn't come home from tobogganing. The Grinch had strangled him and cut him open just so he'd bleed through the snow he was buried in. The toboggan he was offering us was identical to the deceased boys they displayed on the news. To this day, Tracy swears the patch of ice she tumbled over was the spot of a shallow grave. It's safe to say Tracy and I haven't gone to bargaining since. Your parking spot? <laughs> you can kindly park somewhere else, bud. What? You heard the lady! Now park somewhere else before I park my fist in your face! Urgh. I bet your wife wants me to park this Big Mac truck in her little garage, ho! 